How are we doing guys? And it's finished, Nottingham Forest 1, Arsenal 2. And I know I've got a big grin on my face, but my word. Why am I watching the last five minutes of that game with my head in my hands? Like I'm watching some horror movie. Like, how on earth have we ended up having to hold on to that game? Now, I'm going to try and go through this game as best I can and my honest opinion on it. But I'm just sitting there just like, how? You know, Nottingham Forest offered nothing all game. You know, you look at their goal and the bobble and the break and I'm like, oh my word, don't do this to us again. And then he had a moment where they put a corner in the box and they get a header and then they're going, oh, and VAR are checking for a penalty and VAR are doing anything they can to think of a way to give them a goal. And I'm just like, wow, how has this gone from the most comfortable of games to absolute panic stations. You could hear it in the crowd. Most of the fans were already leaving and getting an early night. And I'm just there like, what on earth? How? But listen, we got the three points. And that ultimately is the most important thing. It takes us up to second in the table. Um, currently, um, at you know, the time of me doing this, Aston Villa and Newcastle are still playing. And Aston Villa are losing 2-0. Um, so that's a big result, that one. Um, Man City, of course, they're playing tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be issues with that. And then um, you've got Liverpool as well. But it's the perfect result going into Sunday's game against Liverpool. And, you know, this was a difficult place to go. Um, they've had a bit of a turnaround under the new manager. And, um, yeah, look, listen, it's, it's one of those games where you get out of there with the three points and that's the most important thing. And like I said, not going into Sunday with anything but three points would have been disastrous. You don't know what's going to happen in the Liverpool-Chelsea game tomorrow. So um, big win, big, big win. But it certainly did not have to be that nerve-wracking. You look at the first half, it was so dominant. It was so controlled. But there was no penetration there was absolutely none. It was like having 45 minutes of foreplay and then we couldn't get a hard on. It's like, what on earth was that? Seriously. And that's been one of our biggest problems throughout most of the season. Is that, you know, we do so much in all of these areas and then we just don't seem to deliver right at the key moment and we're not finishing chances. And that's a big, big problem right now. Um, you know, we've scored seven goals in the last two games, some might say, but we're missing a lot of chances. And it's not been, you know, one or two games. It's continuation. It's a lot of games this is happening. You know, you're looking at the stats from the game. 19 shots and only three on target. That is not good enough. It simply isn't. You know... Nottingham Forest had three shots on target. Like, come on. Like, seriously. 74% possession. Like, 756 passes in comparison to 257 for Nottingham Forest. But possession passes, they don't win your football matches. We know that at the end of the day. Sticking the ball in the back of the net. Scoring goals. And um, that was a big problem in the first half. We just lacked penetration we just lacked a cutting edge nothing was moving quick enough nothing was you know moving fast it was just all slow and laborious and just kind of plodding along sort of thing you know not in the forest never done nothing but at the same time neither did we there was a lot there but just nothing on the end. I don't remember Matt Turner having a save to make apart from probably Gabriel Jesus right on half time when he blew the full half time whistle. Sorry, not the full time. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't enough. But in the second half, we came out and we were a different team, completely and utterly a different team. 
and we was excellent in that second half and we was just prodding and prodding and prodding and prodding and listen at the end of the day when you're going to set up with a low block in the way that Nottingham Forest did and you're going to defend and play the way that they did you're going to start to become tired you know substitutions will be key the energy levels will be key discipline will be key and they were not able to do that you look at our first goal it's a prime example we get a throw in and they switch off for a second. Jesus is in. Matt Turner, through his legs, it's 1-0. That split second, that's the difference between the top level and, you know, the bottom level. And as harsh as it is, it is what it is. And um, Nottingham Forest term, you know, they paid the ultimate price for that at the end of the day. Um, and then you look at the second goal. It was a mistake in the middle. And then bang, we broke. Before they know it, Jesus has it. One pass, Saka, touch, goal. Again, that's the difference. Top level, bottom level. You know, you might not get punished for things like that against lesser teams or in the championship, etc. But that's what happens. And um, it was just comfortable then. We started to make some substitutions. Um, you know, Trossard had a really good effort that was just over the bar. And it looked like, yeah, it was just nice. It was comfortable. It was just seeing the game out. We'll take the 2-0. Everything's good. Another clean sheet. We move. And then all of a sudden, they score. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, mate, not again. Here we go. And it replicated what happens at the Emirates. You know, for 85 minutes or so, completely dominated, no dramas, no issues, not in a forest score. And then it's like panic stations and it's all hands to the pump. And you're sitting there thinking, how on earth are we holding on for dear life? And, um, you know, you've got to even look, right? When not in a forest scored, the camera went round to the manager, Nuno Espirito Santo. And um, even he looked like, as if to say like, okay, maybe... Maybe we've still got one opportunity here. He was probably already resigned to, you know, the game's done. And you could see by his expression was this to say, okay, maybe, maybe we could just pump the ball in the box a bit in the next couple of minutes. Who knows? But probably don't deserve it. So, listen, at the end of the day, the three points was justified. The three points, you know, we deserved them. But... There's a lot of things that we need to sort out. There's a lot of things that I'm still not happy with. And it's that fluidity, that attacking area. Smith Rowe, difficult game for him, um, you know, against a side with low blocks. But he's the kind of player that you, you know, supposedly want in these games to be able to pick pockets and find those little killer moments. And not enough. Not enough. Um, so, yeah, look, listen, we've got the job done. And like I said, that is the most important thing. Um, Newcastle beating Aston Villa. Um, Man City playing tomorrow. Liverpool playing tomorrow. Liverpool on Sunday. And as I keep emphasising, that's the most important thing. The fact that we've got to play um, Liverpool on Sunday. So that's a big, big three points. So listen, it is what it is. We've got the job done. And... Um, we move on to that one on Sunday. So, listen, um, that is it for the match reaction. Um, let me know in the comments section what you thought about that game, the performance, standout players, poor players, whatever it might be. Let me know in the comments section. Uh, there's going to be a uh, preview for the Liverpool game. We're going to be doing a combined 11, predicted lineups, you name it. It's all there. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. And um, yeah, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.